All right. Hello, 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 hello. Mm -hmm. Hello, 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 hello. How are you? How are you guys? How are you guys? Um, how is everybody doing? After going to the mechanic to change my oil and check on some few things on my car, I had an appointment with a woman who is from Nigeria. I didn't know her, so I'm getting to know her. This is my first time actually meeting her like for a longer time. Um, remember last week, Wednesday, I think Wednesday or Tuesday, last week, Wednesday or Tuesday, I had taken a Nigerian boy to the test center to do his road test. And this boy passed his road test. If you remember seeing that video, when the boy passed his road test and he was happy, yeah? So apparently when that boy passed the road test, his name is Toby. The boy's name is Toby. Toby ran into a Nigerian woman at the test center who was also trying to do his written test for the road test. Written test. You need to do a written test before you do the actual road test. And then Toby told the woman that I just passed my test. And then the woman said, really? Congratulations. And then this Nigerian woman said, oh, um, who helped you? And then Toby said, you know what? I think you need to meet the guy who helped me. He's a good brother. So I was in my car that day. I think I was in the video. And then you, if you remember, a woman came to me and a woman came to talk to me and say, I think I need your help. I've been driving for 21 years from Nigeria. I have experience for 21 years. So I gave my number to, I told her to take my number from Toby. So the woman took my number and she's been calling, trying to get an appointment so that I can come and help her, coach her. Just check and see whether her driving is good enough, right? So today was the day I met her. And if you remember that very first video, I had told her that her driving is likely not to be good even though she has 21 years. So I saw her, I checked everything. Fast forward, we are not even going to talk about her driving. I want to talk about the woman herself. Um, when I met her, I asked her a question. I could have just started everything with her right away, but I asked her a question. I asked her a question. So where are you from? She said, Nigeria. So good. And then I asked her, are you here by yourself? She said, no, I'm actually here with my kids. So I said, how many kids? She said, five kids. Then I said, how young is the youngest one? Then she said, 11 years old. So, ooh, if the youngest is 11, it means the oldest is likely to be more. <laughs> and she didn't look her age, huh? She looks very young for her age with five kids. Fast forward. So, you know me, I like asking questions. You might think I'm nosy, but these questions I ask is what leads to building good relationships in life. So you're going to learn to, I encourage you to learn to ask great questions when you meet people. Because one question may lead to the other. So I ask her, you have five kids here. Are you alone with the kids or you are with your partner? I'm not assuming you have a partner. Are you here by yourself with the kids or you are here with somebody else? Then she said, oh, my husband is not here. My husband works in the oil and gas industry in Nigeria. It's just me and the case. Then I asked, I asked her again, how did you move to Canada? She said, I moved two years ago. And then I asked her, what made you move to Canada? And then she said, well, initially it was just our first son who is the eldest that we sent overseas to come and study in Canada. And it looks like around that time that he was, the boy was coming for a high school or something. I didn't probe too much into that. Then she said, so when our son came for two or three years, he hadn't visited Nigeria. So me as a woman and a mother, I felt the disconnect that my son has gone far away and now he's so removed from his siblings. Something inside me said it's not right. There has to be a way for my kids to be together. So she discussed with the husband, convinced the husband 
that we should send the other kids to Canada to also study. So she sponsored, they tried it, they did the math. It was expensive, about $30,000 a year for the school fees, huh? They did the math, it was a lot of money, but they, they, she said she just, she just used faith, convinced the husband, the money to send all the remaining four kids to come to Canada and study. And then once the kids came, something told them, no, it's not right for all my kids to also be together without their parents. So she went back again and convinced the husband that, honey, even though we are living a good life in Nigeria, I think I want to go and be with the kids so I can see them, keep an eye on them, be there for them. She, according to her, it wasn't an easy decision, but they had to come to an agreement, and then she decided to move to come to Canada. But how did she come to Canada? She had applied to come here as an international student. Listen to this part. This woman is telling me she has her own business in Nigeria. She's been running the business for 15 good years. She's not struggling. She is not struggling. But she made that decision because of the future of her kids. She left that business back home decided to move to Canada and come and start as an international student. And the rest of the story is just another thing. This woman, when she was speaking, yeah, I could see myself in her. <laughs> I could see the fire. You know, you know the kind of fire that choleric have, huh? Sanguine and choleric, you see their fire, huh? You could see the passion, the faith, and the fire in her. I could see that that woman is going to succeed big time in Canada. Because the way she's thinking, the way she thinks, the way she sees things, is not ordinary. She herself, she said it in the car. She said, I don't like to be an ordinary woman. Oh. Hi. She said she, she doesn't think she's ordinary. She's full of fire. Whilst I was sitting with her when she was talking, I was feeling the fire all over my soul. I think she was just motivating me. You see? If you are going to succeed, you know, you can feel it. <laughs> you can feel it too. While she was talking, I was just quiet and I was soaking it. She knew the place, place of faith in her life. She was telling me how many things she did just by using faith. She said she didn't know how she was going to manage to pay her own fee. So she didn't know how she was going to manage to pay all of the children's fee and accommodation on top. But she just managed to take that initial step of faith and convince the husband. Whilst the husband may not have been on the same page, thinking that all things are going to be easy for her, the woman said, I needed to take that step of faith. And she took it. And the rest of the story is just amazing. Testimonies and testimonies. The car that that woman already has, do you know it was a gift from somebody in Canada? Somebody just looked at her and gifted her a car. Because she's new in Canada. You see, when you operate in the level of faith, huh, people will bless you when you don't even expect it. She said she didn't even know. Somebody just looked at her from church and the person said, take this car. Take it. We are putting insurance on it for you. Go and take it. That is how faith works. So, I said, when I see that woman, all I see is faith. She is full of fire. She's full of fire. Why would things not work in her favor? Not only does she have faith, she knows how to take action. This is just my first time meeting her. Do you see how I'm talking about her? As if I've known her for a long time. Or when you meet people who are full of fire, they don't leave you the same. They don't leave you the same. I told her I was going to make a story just to thank my God for meeting her today. Because in my life, when I pray, I pray to God to bring people of fire into my life. Fire! So if you think I'm fire, huh? there are more people around with more fire. We need to find people like that and, and, and put the firewood together and create more fire. She's full of faith. She has more testimonies that I can go on and share. The school fees that is supposed to be international fees for her, of about her own school fees, she said it's about $19,000 a year. The children's school fees for one year is about $30,000. She has five kids here. Can you do the math? Those of you who have calculators and you are good, calculate it. Five kids, about $30,000 for one child. The woman herself in a college, I believe she's in a college. Huh? Her fees alone, 19000 
even if she was doing well in Nigeria, she would have felt the pain of the money coming out. According to her, it was as if my husband in Nigeria, when he takes the money, he's just empty seat in Canada. He takes the salary and he just empty seat in Canada. That is what she was telling me. But she says she has too much faith. Too much faith. This woman has so much faith. Can you believe? She actually wrote a letter to the immigration people making a case and say, you know what? Even though I'm supposed to be treated as an international student because I don't have my permanent residence and blah, blah, blah. Look at my condition. Me and my children, please localize my fees. Make my fees local. Make it domestic so that I don't have to pay this expensive for my children. I can't. Can you imagine? These things are not normal. Though. They are not supposed to do it. Somebody in immigration approved her and made all her fees local. Do you hear that? She is not a permanent resident. She is not a citizen. She is not supposed to get it. But she's telling me she had faith. She wrote that letter. The first fees of her son from 30,000 dropped to 10,000 local. The second one has also happened. Oh, this is what we call faith. Faith is not about believing in things that are not real. Faith is believing things will happen for you because you are trusting somebody who has the power to make it happen. Some of you don't understand faith. You, th you think faith is believing in things with no evidence. So that's no way to faith. We Christians, huh? you know why we talk about faith? Because we are not just believing in things that are not there. Oh. We are not believing in ghosts. Oh. We are believing in things that are not there because the one we believe is going to make it possible is too great to make it happen. Our faith is not in the things that are yet to happen. Our faith is the person. Our faith is in the person we believe who is going to make it happen. That is what we call faith. When Peter walked on that water, it's not because scientifically it's normal. Though. It's not normal. Though. Have you ever seen any human being walk on water? It's not normal for a human being to walk on water. The laws of gravity don't allow that. But because Peter's faith was in somebody who controls the waters, it will happen. This woman's faith was not in the immigration officer. Not even in the government of Canada. Her faith was in the person of Jesus Christ. And so she knew. So long as she believes without doubt, God will do it. And yes, he did it. I was inspired listening to her story. I pray one day she will just have the... the uh, she will accept to come on my page and just come and blow your minds up. She's full of fire, oh. I told her right away, she looks like a choleric and a sanguine. She's full of adventure. She's full of daring. She will dare. You can just tell she doesn't belong in places of poverty in this country. She, she deserves to own places. You can just tell from just talking to her. And she's a woman. Who are you? Who are you? Tell me, who are you? Do you have faith or you have doubt? When I talk, you see faith in me? It's not because I trust that I will live for 100 years old. It's not before that I can even predict the weather. I cannot even predict the weather. <laughs> I can't do. I can't even predict if I'm going to poo, poo or shit. I can't even predict if I'm going to pee. My faith is in the person who controls things. So the 80s don't understand this, huh? Because they don't know who we believe. We don't believe in the wind. We don't believe in things that are not there. We believe in things that are not yet there, but will happen. If we want it to happen because we believe in somebody. Her story is one of faith. She's only been here for two years. Many of you today, the reason why you are not even taking certain steps is because you lack the faith. You've sat down and you've done all the calculations and you think that it's not possible to even travel. You've done the fees, you've done everything. You don't even see it. Look, faith has no room for a shred of doubt too. That is how faith works, so faith has no room for a shred of doubt. You know what faith means? It simply means you are believing wholeheartedly that the man who is up there will do it for you. And even if he doesn't do it the way you want it, you believe he's going to do something way better than that thing that you are expecting. That is what we call faith. That is faith, though. Until you have faith in life, you can't start a business. Because the person who wants to see the business before he does it, he never does it, oh. Until you have faith, you cannot create an aeroplane. You need to see it, believe it with no doubt, and it happens 
when you take the actions and you back it with work. Faith is not just faith. Faith is backed by action. Faith without work is dead. This woman does not just have faith. She took the step to write a letter. She backed it with action. She backed it with a letter. Oh my goodness. She's telling me she has a diary. And in that diary, she's just communicating with God. And she tells, she said, Lord, this is what you said in Habakkuk 4. You said I should write the vision so bold and make it plain. That's what the woman was telling me. I said, hey, 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 this woman is full of fire. She said, look, in that diary, she writes to God as if she's having a conversation with God. She said, God, this is what happened. No? Said, oh my goodness. Wow. I felt as if I was Mary carrying a child, meeting Elizabeth, and the baby was just jumping around in the belly because you've met a good person. May you meet people like this who will fire you up in life. May you meet people like this who will show you to believe when things are saying it's not possible. May you be surrounded by people who will fire your spirit up. May you learn to have faith that nothing is created without faith. No house is built without faith. The builder of the house must have seen it's possible to build it. The creator of that business must have seen it's possible to create it. The creator of Facebook must have seen from the dormitory in Harvard it's possible to build this multi-million dollar company, a multi-billion dollar company. It's called faith. If you can't see it, and if you can't conceive it, and if you can't take the action, you don't deserve none of it. It will frustrate you and make you miserable. Share this video of inspiration. I hope it bless you. This is how my day goes. I go around meeting people and I pray I meet people like this. I don't want to meet people who will make me dry my bone like a dried spirit. I want people who will fire me up. And I pray I meet more and more people like this. May this video bless you. Even if you are not a Christian, may you start learning to trust in somebody up there. When you keep trusting, he will show up when you need him. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian or not. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian who doesn't believe or not. Remember, there is somebody out there who controls everything and he knows better than you do. Until you believe in him, you can't take a first step. Our babies and our children and our toddlers, they don't even know when they take that first step they are going to fall off. They still have faith and they take that first step and they take the second step and they take the second step and they take the third one. Even if they fall, they keep going and they keep trusting. One day they will walk. One day they will run. One day they will jump and they take the step. Even toddlers and babies have faith. How much more you as an adult? You have allowed fear to drown you and drown you. You've never been able to do anything in life. What do you have today? Is your mind filled with doubt? Are you doubting everything in life? Or you're having faith? Some of you will never apply for anything about in Canada. Not because you lack the information. You have the information. But because your mind is also controlled with fear and doubt. You're already assuming you deserve to be, to, to, you are going to get a visa refuser. I'm not saying it's not possible to not get a visa or get a refuser. But what kind of faith do you have? Did you read the story I posted on my page from the realtor? The guy who helped me to buy the house. Read that story again. I posted it. He said, I have never seen a man so determined like Jimmy. That is me. I am so determined when things are odd, I'll keep pushing until I fall down. That is how I am. Yes. Yes. I don't give up. I will only give up when God tells me clearly it's not meant for me. I don't give up. I don't give up. Why will you give up? Is this life for givers? People who give up in life? Are they the ones who win this life? If Lukaku had given up, will Lukaku be coming back to the same Chelsea today? When Chelsea said, we don't want you no more. Will he have come back? Go and watch an old video of Lukaku when he was a teenager. The player of Lukaku, the player you see called Lukaku. I watch a video. When he was a teenager. And those days, Drogba was the top striker in the world. Though. One of the top strikers in the world was Drogba. It was the time of Drogba. Lukaku went to the stadium of Chelsea. And he was sitting down. He was just sitting and watching Stamford Bridge. And he was watching. He was watching. The gentleman who took him on that tour was telling him, Look, your eyes is so fixated and you're watching. What are you looking? He said, one day I'm going to play here. That is what Lukaku said. Go back and look for that video and watch it. 
He said, one day I'm going to play in this stadium. You need to see it so bright in your eyes. Focus, so fixated to see it happen. Lukaku said, one day I will play in this stadium. And people will watch me. And my mom will watch me play. Did it happen? Yes. He played. Even when he had his moments and he was not at his peak. And Chelsea said, we don't think you are at your peak. We want you to go. Lukaku said, I will still prove to you I deserve to play here. That same club that sold him cheaply has paid more than four or five times to bring him back. Guys, I don't know you. You don't deserve nothing good in life if you are just going to be giving up. Yeah, if this woman was looking at her business back home, she wouldn't have been here. If she was doing the math and picking calculator and calculating everything and all the expenses, she wouldn't be here. She's living in a, an apartment where she has just one bathroom for her all her children. And she's telling me in Nigeria, I have many bathrooms, so this is the first time my children are even having to share one bathroom. But she knows it is temporary. You can tell. She's telling me. She says she has faith. She knows it is temporary. What kind of faith do you have, guys? What kind of faith do you have? It hurts. The moment I started having faith, the world started listening to me. The moment I started having weight, everything around me started obeying. Yes. When I say I'm going to buy an apartment, watch me, guys. Watch me. Read my list. I am going to own several apartments in Canada. Read my lips. It will happen. Do I look like I mean it? Yes. Before you see me buy, remember I said it too when I mean it. And I won't go and sleep and just say it too. I'm going to back it with work. Because my creator made me a co-creator. He said, go around and create. You have the power to make things happen. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? What do you believe in? Who are you? I hope you've been blessed. And I hope my encounter with this woman has tricked down to bless you too. Surround yourself with people who will fire you up. The world is for people who have faith and will dare take a step. Not for people who are chicken out and chicken out on a lady who said, I don't love you. And so they chicken out. The toughest ladies are reserved for the guys who keep coming back until they get them. Not those who turn back when the woman says no. If all women should say no to us and we all run back, who will marry them? God bless you. This is Choco Millionaire. Remember, you don't need more money to live this life. All you need is wisdom. Because wisdom is the principal thing in life. And wisdom comes from God. If you ever see anybody who says he doesn't believe in God and he has wisdom, it's called worldly wisdom. It will crush him one day and he will perish one day. It is a fact of life. Get angry. Now your own cup of tea. <laughs> Bye. God bless you. Yeah. Share this video. Let it be a blessing to people. There is so much bad content out there. Let's light up the world with positive content. All right. God bless you. Share my video. Like. Drop the emoji. Drop your comments. Share. And let everybody get blessed with that. Okay. I'm going to get home now and see my kids. I hope to talk to you another time. Bless you. Shalom. Peace.